another crucial activity to pick up in seventh and eighth grade is reading. And this is advice that applies not just for seventh and eighth grade, it's through the high school years, through college years, into adulthood, so, so important. Uh, that's reading. Reading is, in our opinion, the fundamental, essential, intellectual activity. And this is true whether someone's interested in literature, where it might seem obvious, or science, maybe a little less so, or even math. Uh, because everything, whether whatever field you go into, whatever field someone works in, it's all about reading and writing and communication and uh, evaluating ideas and presenting ideas. And so reading is the foundation to those things. And so you might say, well, don't students read in school? Yes, they do. But we find that typically in-school reading is limited in two ways. And it's no criticism of schools. It's just the reality of how things go. Um, it's limited in volume. So students may read, I don't know, a book a month, a book every few weeks, depends on the class. But that's not a lot. That's not a lot of daily reading when you add it up. And it's also insufficient in genre. So most of the reading done in middle school and in high school is fiction. It's literary. It's novels and plays and poetry. And of course, good stuff, definitely want to encourage that. But when you look at the SAT and ACT reading, the vast majority of questions and passages in those sections are nonfiction, so science and history and social science, not fiction. There's one fiction passage on each of those tests, one on the SAT, one on the ACT. So sure, students do some reading in school, but there's not much of it, and it's limited to fiction. And so we need to broaden the horizons. We need to be exposed to a lot of different kinds of reading, a lot of different kinds of writers, topics, and that's going to really lay that foundation, not just for the SAT and ACT, but academically and beyond. The major benefits of reading are to build, of course, those comprehension skills, to be able to take a look at a paragraph or a sentence or a a whole essay and read it and understand its points and be able to communicate them to someone else if need be. It helps build vocabulary. Vocabulary is something that you can't improve in a day or a week or a month. It is a long-term process. And the same thing with background knowledge. Uh, studies have shown that, let's imagine for example, you have a, an article or a story or an essay about baseball. You have two groups of students. One group of students is a, a really strong readers you know, top of their class in reading, but they don't know anything about baseball. So not baseball fans at all. You have another group that are uh, weaker in reading, so they're more towards the bottom of their class, let's say, but they love baseball. Big fans of baseball know a lot. You ask those two groups of kids to read, or anybody, you ask those two groups of people to read that article, that baseball essay, and you test to see who understood the most, who comprehended the most. And what you find is that the students who are generally weaker readers, but knew more about the topic, understand more than the strong readers do, which may be not what you would expect. You would think a strong reader would be able to leverage their skills to understand the text, and indeed they can. It's just that background knowledge really helps those um, developing readers to just have the context to understand the material more than someone who doesn't know anything about the topic. So why this is important is on the SAT, on the ACT, the reading sections are not tests of content. They're not science tests, they're not history tests. You don't need to necessarily know facts. But having that background knowledge, that experience, that exposure can make a huge difference to what they take from the passage. So the more that you read over the long term, uh, the more you're building up all of these long-term skills and uh, knowledge sets. Some general tips on how to read, and again, this applies to everybody, 7th, 8th, and above. Uh, generally, read 20 to 30 minutes per day is a good benchmark. For younger students, maybe 10 to 20 is more appropriate, but once you get into high school, yeah, like a good 20, 30 minutes per day, if not per day, then maybe three days or four days per week. Again, it's just about that consistency. It doesn't have to be like, you know, the same, same thing every day, you know, constantly, but you want to be consistent on a weekly basis, right? Reading every week a decent amount um, to keep up that habit and build those skills. Typically, we first point readers to read stuff that they enjoy, especially if reading is not their, you know, they're not drawn to reading immediately. Start with stuff that you enjoy, right? It doesn't have to be Shakespeare. It doesn't have to be, you know, the Encyclopedia Britannica, right? It can be anything really, just to start the habit of reading. 
and then once the habit is is um, ingrained a bit, then you can look to expand into different types of readings. Uh, when you read, you want to read again a mix of nonfiction and fiction. Probably if you're reading on your own, weighted a little bit more towards nonfiction because again, that's probably the only exposure you'll get to that material, uh, barring some occasional coursework in school. So definitely want to focus on nonfiction, but you can throw in some fiction as well. One really great place to get uh, some great sources of things to read would be newspapers for their op-eds and their editorials and their long-form articles, um, magazines, um, respected and um, rigorous blogs and like news websites, any place like the New Yorker, for example, any place where you can get you know short little essays to longer form essays on a variety of topics, science and history and current events and politics and whatever, right? Uh, those are really great sources. So you don't have to read really long books. Um, you want to uh, get a good mix of short and long work. So you can mix some books in there. You can read some you know, page long things. You can read things that are 10 pages long. Get a good mix of short and long works. But newspapers and magazines, that's a really great place to get uh, a nice assortment of different types of topics. And then finally, read good stuff. So at first, yes, students can read stuff that they enjoy. Um, but eventually, you want to find material that's challenging, that pushes students, right? You don't want to just read like young adult fiction. That's fine. It's a good start. But you want to expand your horizons as much as possible. And by good stuff, we also mean, you know, reading Facebook posts or uh, you know, YouTube comments or that, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's reading technically, but it's not the kind of reading that we're talking about here. We're talking about much more structured, formal writing by professionals, by experts. That's the, the should be the main um, ingredients or should be the main type of reading that uh, a student should consume.